Diplomacy is inching along with China. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen met with her Chinese counterpart one week before President Biden meets with President Xi Jinping. The exact timing of the Biden-Xi meeting has yet to be announced. The Chinese leader has not set foot in the United States since 2017. Secretary Yellen says the two largest economies have an obligation to lead on the world stage. The United States has no desire to decouple from China. When we have concerns about specific economic practices, such as those that prevent American firms and workers from competing on a living level playing field, we will communicate them directly. Let's bring in William Reinsch. He's the Scholl Chair in International Business at the Center for Strategic and International Studies. Thank you so much for being with us. The White House says it doesn't expect a major breakthrough, but of course, they never do that. They always start expectations very low. Still, uh, expectations probably should be low. What, what can we expect realistically to come out of these talks? Well, I think you're right. They should be low. I, in, uh, the most important thing is the fact that it's happening, uh, that the secretary is meeting with, uh, with He Lefeng, and hopefully Xi Jinping will actually show up and they'll have a meeting. Uh, you know, it's, it's a good sign that the, the two biggest uh, economies in the world have decided that they need to talk to each other and actually have a dialogue. Um, I'm not sure that, uh, that it's, the dialogue itself is going to produce much change. I mean, they, the differences are very deep. The economic differences are very deep. Uh, and one meeting isn't going to change that, but it'll help avoid surprises. And it'll help each side get a better understanding of where the other side is coming from. So I think, you know, net, it, it's a good thing. I think it'll be uh, it'll be particularly important for us to be very clear to Xi Jinping uh, what our priorities and goals are and what our expectations uh, for them are, particularly on, on some non-economic issues like uh, their support for Russia in the Ukraine war, which I think will be a big topic of the of the two presidents. What are is it possible to name what the the major priorities are for the United States, and then what U.S. officials need to know are the major priorities for China? Well, I think the major priorities for the United States are, are primarily uh, not economic. I mean, there are a lot of economic issues, but I think for President Biden, it's uh, Chinese support for Ru of Russia in the Ukraine war. Uh, it's what China is uh, going to do or not do in the Middle East, uh, what they're doing in the South China Sea, uh, you know, a range of sort of geopolitical and military related issues like that. In economics, uh, both sides have complaints. Uh, our complaints have been the same for years. Uh, you know, uh, subsidies uh, on their in industries that allow them to keep, compete unfairly with ours, um, forced technology transfer, intellectual property theft, uh, harassment of Western companies. Um, uh, their concerns about us are our technology controls, our export controls, uh, their disagreement with all the complaints that I just decided that we make. Uh, and their desire for more investment uh, from the United States, which I think is something that, that Secretary Yellen has probably uh, heard about uh, yesterday and will hear about uh, today and tomorrow. In terms of U.S. business, you know, in the political sphere, there is a, a, a lot of talk about China's military um, development and its ambitions with Taiwan. What does U.S. business, what interest does it have in making those investments in China? There's an enormous market there. Lots of companies rely on, on Chinese manufacturing in the Chinese market. What are the possible tensions between uh, the American military posture and then the interests of American corporations? Well, particularly in the high, uh, in the high tech area, and particularly in information and communication technology, which is really an integral part of, of the military uh, these days, uh, the dilemma that American companies have is that China is uh, simultaneously their best customer and their biggest threat. Uh, they make a lot of money selling to China. At the same time, the Chinese have been very clear in their five-year plans and statements they've made that their, uh, their economic goal is to develop global champions that will compete with ours uh, and take us on. So, you know, the smart American companies see the train coming down the tracks and are trying to figure out what to do about it. At the same time, they don't want to be shut out of the Chinese market. It's what you said, it's very large, lots of consumers, and it's a chance for them to uh, to make a lot of money, which by the way, they can use to reinvest in R&D, 
to develop next generation products that help our military, among other things. So there's a kind of a deeply complicated uh, relationship here. And it's uh, been hard for the companies to sort out how they need to position themselves. And it's a little bit hard for the government to decide how tough to be on regulation mm. because, uh, you know, you want to you don't want to assist the Chinese military. At the same time, you don't want to kneecap your own industries by denying them the revenue they need to build better defense products for us. And finally, briefly, there's a long tradition in American politics of being very tough on China in election years. And then um, the reality is much more complicated. Do you see an instance, since we're heading into an election year, of uh, where there might be overreach, might be rhetoric that in the campaigns ends up constraining U.S. diplomatic options? Oh, sure. It's already happening. Uh, listen to virtually any member of Congress. Uh, being anti-China right now in the United States is a thing. It's echoed in public opinion. Uh, last year, I believe, polling 83% of the American people had an unfavorable impression of China. Um, it's echoed in the Congress. Uh, people are nervous about it. Uh, they're nervous on the defense side. They're nervous on the economic side. And yes, you're going to see overreach. I think right now you've got members of Congress competing to see who can come up with the most anti-China legislative proposals. Uh, it's only going to get worse for the next year. William Reinsch with the Center for Strategic and International Studies. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you.